Hi there, and welcome back to our lounge. We've all been at the mercy of a prick on a power trip, the kind of buttoned up bantam rooster who gets off on control. Oftentimes we get the short end of that stick, but today the court rules in our favor. Won a lawsuit against a guy who tried to force me out of business because I broke his local monopoly. I'm 26 years old and I decided to open my own business this year. Moving forward in this post, I should point out that I am from a small town, a thousand people in the rural Midwest. Because of this, everyone has some sort of connection with someone. We went to one of the liquor stores in the closest city, 30-ish minutes away, small city of 8,000 people. When we were grabbing some alcohol for a party, I was looking at the prices and saw how insane the prices were. For a six pack of a local beer, we were charged $15. I was thinking about this and figured that I could probably make bank opening a liquor store. Back in February, I was furious about my crappy job and thinking out loud how cool it would be to own my own business to a friend. My friend's mom happened to be the president of the local bank. He told me, hey, with the pandemic, the bank has been struggling to find customers to give out loans. Right now, the bank is giving loans for cheap. A couple of weeks later, I went in and met with my friend's mom and pitched my idea with the research I had done on alcohol prices, potential demand, and estimated income. I got the loan at a fantastic interest rate. I bought a building, which happened to be the former bank, and hired my dad to help me renovate the building. My dad is a general contractor and he gave me an excellent quote on materials and labor. After working everything out with the distributors, getting the proper licenses and getting my paperwork I needed for the government, I was ready to open my liquor store in May. I had started taking out ads in the local newspaper, advertising my store, and my prices. When I was in talks with my distributors, I learned, even with inflation and everything else in the liquor stores in the city, had like an 80% markup. I talked to a local business owner, and he suggested that I have around a 35-40% to 40 markup. Because of this, I was significantly cheaper than the closest liquor store and had a much wider selection than the gas stations and small local stores nearby. My hometown is near a national forest. As such, we have a ton of people who come up for weekends for recreational activities year-round. My first week, the week before Memorial Weekend, after opening I had made a $4,000 profit. It was great being my own boss. If someone was rude to me or my girlfriend, oh, I'm sorry, you can do your business elsewhere. If someone tells my girlfriend, go back to China, you chink witch, they can pay me 15% more at the register. Did the gang and I run out of alcohol? Time to grab my keys, not car keys, the store keys. My apartment is like two blocks away and go to the store. That's not to say that I wasn't difficult running my own business, especially that my only employee was my girlfriend and we were both working six or seven, 10 to 12 hour days a week. I was both manager, accountant and cashier, but F it's so much nicer knowing I can tell someone to pound sand for being a prick. A couple of weeks after Memorial Day, some old guy walks into my store for a couple of minutes after I opened. He seemed friendly enough, but eventually he offered to buy my store. I'm not going to say the amount, but it wouldn't have even covered my principal on the loan. I rejected the proposal outright and refused to negotiate the sum higher. He walked out of my store saying, Well, you'll be sorry you rejected that offer. The next month, a guy walked into my store and asked if I was the owner. After saying yes, I was informed that my business was being sued by this random guy I never heard of for libel. After he left, I was freaking out and I decided that I was going to close early. When I got home, I googled the guy and soon saw a picture of the guy that tried to buy my store. It turns out that this is the guy who owns both of the liquor stores in the nearby city. It also just so happens that he is on city council. With a little bit of further digging, I learned that this city has an ordinance that reads, any business institution that does not fulfill the definition of a restaurant, tavern, or liquor dispensary will be excluded from obtaining a license for the sale of alcohol. Later, I discovered that the same guy happens to be the head of the board which approves liquor licenses. I love small town corruption. Either way, I had a major issue. My maternal uncle happens to be a lawyer in a neighboring state. I decided to call him and try to get some legal advice. I talked to him and read the documents that I had been handed served over the phone and the research I had done. After receiving all of the information I had read off, I was expecting to get some sort of advice, but instead heard, hang on, I've got to make a call. And he hung up, I'm freaking out. I was actually about to post my first post to r slash legal advice. I'll be honest, I just wanted someone to tell me it was going to be okay, and I didn't need to crawl to this guy on my hands and knees. As I was writing the title, my uncle called back. Hey OP, I just got off the phone with my partner. He agreed that we can take your case pro bono. If you would like to accept, we can discuss at my office tomorrow at 1 o'clock. This is how I learned that my uncle is on the bar in three states. So we meet and we discuss the case. It turns out that the guy filed the libel suit against my business based on the ads I took out in the local newspapers. He claimed that my ads were targeted to damage his and his business's reputation. 
There were a few other things that I had no idea what was being referenced, but my uncle assured me that we would win the case no problem. Three weeks later, the case is dismissed, but after my uncle says, people like that piece of work will likely try to file another suit against you. If that happens, call me and I promise I will help. The next day, I get served again, but this time I am the defendant, not my store, me. I swear to God, I look at the documentation and the only thing that changed was instead of my business's name, mine is listed as the defendant. Same thing happens. Four weeks later, the case is dismissed. Over the next three months, I was sued just as many times. Before the fifth case's hearing, we had a settlement meeting. My uncle, the judge, the guy suing me, his lawyer, a bailiff, and I were sitting in this room. Judge says, you two have been in court four times already. Is there any way we could come to an agreement that'll stop this cycle of faulty litigation? The guy's lawyer says they have an offer and hand it to my uncle, who then hands it to me. It essentially read that he'll stop all litigation if I sell my business for about 30% of the remaining loan principal. I outright rejected the offer and made a counteroffer. I said, if you drop this case, I won't sue your butt for harassment. He busts out laughing. Sue me? With what money? The legal fees alone ought to have you drained. You should be happy. I chose to extend this offer, not sue your butt into bankruptcy and buy that crap hole from the bank when they foreclose on your dumb behind. The judge, the bailiff, and the guy's own lawyer were all looking at him aghast for saying the silent part out loud about the real reason I was getting sued. My uncle straight out said to him, Oh, I'm sorry, apparently you were never told. I've taken all of my nephew's cases pro bono. The only money he has spent on your litigations is gas. And bluntly, sir, I think your outburst has just ensured a suit against you. After that, we just left and I was then informed a few days later the litigation was dropped. Right now, my uncle and I are talking about the future suit against the guy. I want to sue the guy for every high amount to try and get press attention on this guy for his sketchy actions. Although my uncle warned me that we'll need to be careful because if we set the damages too high, it'll look like we're just being vindictive. This suit won't be pro bono, but after getting sued five times for free, essentially, I am not going to complain. Looking back on this, I'm so thankful that my friends and family supported the entire way, especially my uncle. Without my uncle, I would have absolutely lost my business. Edit. I'm sorry, but this isn't an update on my lawsuit. Although my uncle came into the store today and informed me, unofficially, that if I choose to continue with the lawsuit, his firm will take the case on a 25% contingency. This is mostly just fixing some spelling and grammar errors in the post. Also, if you are interested, I posted the story about when that customer said to my girlfriend, go back to China, you chink witch. I'll add a link. The community definitely has some thoughts. The jester starts us off. That's some story and just goes to show the corruption that can happen. I'm glad you have your uncle. I'd love to hear about the follow-ups on this one if you get some time to post. The OP replies, yeah, depending on how the case moves forward, I'll like to post an edit, but I can't promise anything for a few weeks or months. Proper justice is slow, unfortunately. H010Cron says, you have cameras in your store and home, right? Because if this guy is as nuts as you make him out to be, I wouldn't be surprised at an accidental fire or destruction happening. The OP replies, of course I have cameras. Liquor stores are the businesses that are robbed the most frequently. But yeah, that was something my girlfriend is worried about. I am Hecat says, I hope you squeeze the melon head dry. Whiplash 104 chimes in, great story. Sorry for all the trouble you have faced and the racism about your girlfriend. It is truly inspiring that you saw a market and took the initiative, start and run your business ethically. My whole life I've wanted to start a business but could never come up with a good enough plan or guts to follow through. Maybe being lucky enough to have a good enough career, usually working good people, never gave me the proper motivation. I certainly hope you prevail and succeed. I hope there's a way to, legally, hurt that guy financially without being too dirty. Not that you have extra time or anything, but look into getting a seat in city council, if there's an advantage to doing so. My wife's aunt spent so much time dealing with the city council for a small real estate project, she figured she might as well just run for council and got it. Of course. Be careful not to show your hand and make the guy feel so threatened that he comes at you harder. It sounds like you're relatively young and have a future to build with your business and I'm sure someday a family. Thanks for sharing. Your uncle and partner are stand-up guys. This guy sounds like a dirtbag and I'm not surprised that he's on the council. People like this usually are. They like to buy their way to the top and use scare tactics to control people, especially in small towns. Small towns are the only place they can get away with playing God. I'm sorry that you tried to escape the crappiness of a job and just ended up bumping into this SOB. That's what we have to keep doing to people like this, so keep fighting back and pushing the boundaries. Thankfully, your uncle was able to provide you with pro bono advice. The majority of people aren't as fortunate. 
Keep fighting the good fight, OP. Stick it to the man. Have you had a similar issue before? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Lounge. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have something you want to say regarding today's content, share that with us in the comments below. See you soon.